Hello, it's Ken Heron and my friend, the Kronos 1.4 high-speed camera. It's been quite the learning curve, but I've had a little bit of fun with it today, specifically with DJI Phantom 4 propellers. And they have some interesting properties to them that you can only really see in super slow motion. First thing I'm gonna do is see what this looks like when I bend it to its breaking point and film it at 15,941 frames a second. And at that frame rate, you can see here with the box inside the box, that's as much of the sensor as it's gonna be able to use at that high frame rate. And I'm gonna need a lot of light. In fact, I don't have enough light. I had to order a special light that isn't here yet. So we'll have to see if this thing will do the trick until then. I can't move it much from this spot. So I gotta hold this. Move the cup. And then... Let's see if I got it! This uses a CS type mount directly over the sensor and it screws right in there. This is the lens that came with it. It's really for security cameras. You can see the threads here, how small it is. So what I did was I bought this CS to F type mount adapter so that I can use my Nikon lenses with this. It's the Nikon Micro Nikkor 40 millimeter and uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. It's awesome. Next thing I wanted to do was see what it looked like when your drone hit a solid object. I'm not a big fan of the quiet props, so I always use the OEM ones that originally came with the Phantom 4 series. I wanted to see if these were made differently uh, quality wise. So I slammed one into a pole and then slammed the other into a pole. First, the quiet ones. I thought that it was going to shatter in a gazillion pieces because very often at crash scenes, you see pieces of your props lying on the ground. But there was an amazing amount of flex happening that you can't normally see with the naked eye. Will the original non-quiet prop do the same thing? Let's find out. Indeed, it does do the same thing. DJI designed these to have some flex to them. And that is why I can't recommend you using carbon fiber or wood or any other type of propeller that doesn't flex because they're made to do just that. Now, of course, if that was your arm instead of a metal pole, <laughs> that would hurt. Well, that was fun and all, but it wasn't spectacular. It didn't look all that great. So I went into my candy bin and I pulled out some Razzmatazz candy canes. First, I dropped one onto an already moving propeller. I thought that was really cool, so I upped the ante and tried three of them. Then I started looking around for more things to break, and I found a mug. Skyping Mel. Hey, Mel. Hey, Ken. How you doing? You, do, you doing okay? Oh man, I feel terrible, buddy. I'm sorry about that. I just had a quick question for you. Okay. All right, you know I got this uh, high-speed camera, right? Yeah. Well, uh, I was going to do a little bit of testing, and I wanted to know if your feelings would be hurt if I uh, victimized this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, what I was going to do is drop this from a height and film it shattering into a gazillion pieces, but I didn't want you to see it and get your feelings hurt. Well, only if you let me give you another one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's a deal. All right, thank you. Sounds good. This looks a little bit brighter because I was filming at 640 by 480 at 4,436 frames a second. It didn't break. It broke a little piece of the floor there, you can see flying off. So I had to try it again. And, yes. Very satisfying. 
Sorry, Mel. That's a very well-made mug, by the way. Dropping. Well, that's about all I can do for now until the sun comes out. I'm relegated to being indoors. So if you have any ideas for stuff you'd like to see at super slow motion, go ahead and put your ideas in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until next time, buh and bye. <laughs>